Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I'm Anshika Mishra. Here's what I bring to you from the world of medicine. Energy drinks linked to dangerous cardiac arrhythmias in patients with genetic heart disease, according to a study. A new study published in Heart Rhythm by Elsevier examined the potential dangers of consuming energy drinks for patients with genetic heart diseases. Energy drinks contain caffeine ranging from 80 mg to 300 mg per serving compared to 100 mg in an 8-ounce cup of brewed coffee. However, most of these energy drinks contain other stimulating ingredients in addition to caffeine that are unregulated by the FDA such as taurine and guarana. It has been postulated that the highly stimulating and unregulated ingredients alter heart rate, blood pressure, cardiac contractility and cardiac repolarization in a potentially pro-arrhythmic manner. In the study, a cohort of 144 sudden cardiac arrest survivors was examined, of which 7 patients had consumed one or more energy drink in close proximity to their cardiac event. In addition to examining the consumption of energy drinks among the cohort of sudden cardiac arrest survivors, the researchers also looked closely at the type of cardiac event as well as the conditions surrounding the event, such as exercise and other stressors known to be associated with genetic heart disease-associated cardiac arrhythmias. Are you also aspiring to excel in medical journalism and delve into the intricacies of health and medical reporting? Explore our comprehensive course on medical and health journalism available at the Medical Dialogues Academy. Learn from industry experts who possess in-depth knowledge and experience in this field. For further details, scan the QR code provided or access the link in the description box below. Study links late sleep schedules to reduce activity and higher carb intake in teens. A new study to be presented at the Sleep 2024 annual meeting found that circadian misalignment which is highly prevalent in adolescent, is linked with carbohydrate consumption and sedentary behavior in teens. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, sleep is essential to health and healthy sleep requires adequate duration, good quality, appropriate timing and regularity, and the absence of sleep disturbances or disorders. A delayed sleep schedule, characterized by sleep timing that is later than conventional or socially acceptable timing, is more common among adolescents and young adults. A late sleeping schedule is also closely linked to increased carbohydrate consumption. Going to bed late decreases overall activity levels, leading to more sedentary behavior. This reduction in physical activity can influence dietary habits, causing individuals to consume quick energy sources such as carbohydrates to compensate for the lack of movement and energy expenditure. Delaying sleep schedule is normal during puberty and adolescence. However, some adolescents delay their sleep schedule to an extent that they become misaligned with the day-night cycle, their social schedules and responsibilities, said Principal Investigator Julio Fernandez. Narcolepsy may be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and adverse cardiac events, study finds. Two new studies to be presented at the SLEEP 2024 annual meeting show that narcolepsy is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and adverse cardiac events. According to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, narcolepsy is a central disorder of hypersomnolence, primarily characterized by repeated daily episodes of an irrepressible need to sleep or lapses into drowniness or sleeping. In some cases, sleepiness manifests as sudden, irresistible sleep attacks that may occur in unusual situations such as eating or walking. People who have narcolepsy also may experience episodes of cataplexy, which involve the sudden loss of muscle tone with retained consciousness, along with hallucinations or sleep paralysis analysis during the transition from wake to sleep. The cohort studies used the 2005 to 2021 commercial and Medicare supplemental databases to identify people with a first diagnosis of narcolepsy and a comparison cohort of people without narcolepsy. Both study sample comprised 34,562 people with narcolepsy and 1,405 match controls. The researchers controlled for the use of stimulants, oxybates and other wake-promoting agents because these medications are commonly used to treat excessive daytime sleepiness associated with narcolepsy. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for more updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.